If you're struggling to make solid contact or to compress the ball the way that we see the pros do, this is because you're not moving your trail shoulder correctly. You see, we need our trail shoulder to be moving down closer to the golf ball. If my right shoulder doesn't move down closer to the golf ball, you can see what ends up happening. I have to early release the club. That's gonna make me tend to hit the ground sooner or even hit a lot of thin or top shots. That's gonna make it very difficult to control the face because the face is just gonna be rolling over hard. It makes it very, very difficult to time. And I'm also gonna be adding a lot of loft, which makes me lose a lot of my power. If I'm able to move my right shoulder down to the golf ball, now I can stabilize this face. This face is staying square a lot longer through the impact zone. I'm able to get my hands in front of the golf ball. And it also pushes the low point of my swing, which is where the club bottoms out, in front of the golf ball. That allows me to hit down on the ball, make ball first contact, and really compress it like we see all the pros do. Now, if you're not doing this, it's just because we don't understand how the body needs to move to be able to get into that position. I'm gonna give you a great drill to be able to do that. But first, let's test this. Let me make a swing here where I try to keep my shoulder from moving down to the golf ball. And let's just see what my ball flight looks like. I got an eight iron here. Normally my eight iron is 165 yards-ish. So let's go ahead and give this a try here. I'll go ahead and try and hit one. And I'll try to not allow my right shoulder to get down to the golf ball. And let's see what happens here. I really thin that really bad. The only reason why I had any kind of uh, decent launch as far as not going as a sky ball was because I hit it really thin. When you hit it thin, the ball will launch a lot lower. But had I hit that in the center of the face, that ball would have went a mile up in the air. But that's very difficult to do if I'm early releasing the club, right? The only thing I can really do is pick it off the turf when I do that. So if you're picking it off the turf, this is most likely something that's going on with you. As you can see, I also yanked that way to the left. And that is because I had no control of the club face. When I'm coming in, I'm throwing my hand, right? That face is gonna roll over hard. You know, sometimes I might hit a slice if I leave the face too open. If I don't time it right and I roll it over too much, that's what's gonna happen there, right? And that's gonna be, that's left of the green. That might be in a bunker. Um, and that's even if I hit it far, far enough. I didn't have a lot of power there. 77 miles per hour, I'm usually in the 80s with my nine iron, or excuse me, with my eight iron here. So let's talk about what we need to do to get the chest opening up. So one of my favorite drills to do for this is a one arm right hand drill because it really helps you to focus on what's going on with this unit. You see, when I don't bring my shoulder down to the golf ball, what happens with my wrist? My wrist has to flip, right? My wrist has to extend or what this would actually be flexing down in the downswing. My right arm has to straighten out. I'm basically kind of punching my, my arm down there and my hands are gonna roll over very quickly. Whereas if I bring my right shoulder down to the golf ball, well now my right arm's gonna be more tucked, right? I'm gonna have some bend in it. Now there is gonna be some straightening out of it as you're coming into the golf ball, but we need to feel how our body needs to turn and try to feel like our trail arm is staying bent. We need to feel like our trail wrist is being, is being bent back as we're, as we're coming through. So I want you to just start out with some practice swings here. And one hand um, on the club, right hand on the club. And I want you to take your left hand and just put it on your, on your uh, right shoulder. The reason why you wanna put it there is because you may as well do something with your left hand when you're doing these, these drills. But if you put it on your right shoulder, it makes it a lot easier to feel like what the right shoulder is doing, right? We have to understand how to get that down to the golf ball, and you're just more aware of what it's doing if you put your left hand on the club. You may as well put, or left hand on the shoulder, you may as well put it somewhere, right? So I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna bend this back to here. I'm gonna have some bend in my arm. I'm gonna have some bend in my wrist. And what's also really important with this is I wanna have my, my butt end of my club pointing right at the target. The reason is I wanna have this club working from the inside so that way I can open up my body. If I have it out here, if I have it pointing left at the target, I'm just gonna come down really steep and yank it way to the left, right? So I wanna have it nice and bent back here so that way when I rotate through, I can have that club nicely on plane, right? So I'm gonna set up here, hand on the shoulder, I'm gonna bend this back, and I'm gonna try to keep all of this the same, right? The only, I wanna feel like the only thing that's bringing this club to the golf ball is the rotation of my shoulder, right? So let's go ahead and give it a try here. I'm gonna bend this back, I rock back, and rock through. So I had a good, a good job of brushing the turf. Now you may find that it's very difficult to brush the turf when you do this. And that's because you're not used to using your legs properly. You see, if you don't bring your shoulder down to the golf ball, you basically have to straighten out your legs. You have to stand up 
to, to make that happen, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna bend my knees as I'm coming down. Now, I just don't wanna bend my knees. It's also important where the knees go. You see, if I bend my knees and I bend them in, I can't rotate. I'm gonna stall that shoulder and I'm either gonna stub the club into the ground or I'm gonna have to stand up to make room for the club, right? So we need to get these knees going outward. Now, if you flare up, if you flare open your feet like this, it makes it easy just to think, okay, I'm just, putting, I'm just putting my knees out over the toes to start my downswing. If you set up with it more square like this, then I would try to feel like you're going out over your pinky toes when you're doing that. But I set up nice and flared so it's easy for me just to think, okay, my knees are going out over my toes. I also need to have the sensation that I'm pushing my hips back, right? That allows me to move closer down to the golf ball. You see, if my hips move forward, my upper body's gotta move up, right? If they didn't, if my hips move forward and I stayed bent over, right, then I'm just gonna fall on my face. So I need to push my hips back, flex my knees down, push my hips back. And then the last piece is I need to have some right side bend. You see, when I don't move my shoulder down to the golf ball, I don't really get much side bend. There's a little bit happening there usually, but there's usually not very much. In order to be able to rotate my body and rotate my chest kind of toward the target here, I need to have some crunch in my side. I need to feel like I'm crunching down to my side. I need to feel like my shoulders are almost rotating like a Ferris wheel. So a lot of people are rotating their shoulders like a merry-go-round, right? I need to have, feel like my shoulders are moving like a Ferris wheel. That's gonna help you to get those shoulders more steep, right? That's where you wanna be steep is with your shoulders. And that's gonna allow you to be able to get that shoulder down to the golf ball, all right? So with those things in mind, Right? If you're struggling with this, you have to look at those things that are going on. What am I doing with my knees? Am I bending my hips back? Am I getting right side bend? Those are really the keys that are, of what's going on. Now, if you're doing those things and you're just throwing this club into the ball, it's because, or into the ground behind the ball, it's because of what you're doing with your arms. Right? So if you're really straightening out your trail arm, if you're really straightening out your trail wrist, you can see if I do that, if I'm doing all these things correctly, but I'm doing that with my arm, I'm just going to throw it down to the back of the ball. So I need to keep that trail arm bent, that trail wrist bent back to be able to make this happen. So if you're struggling with that, I highly recommend doing this with a stick, right? Because it's gonna give you feedback on whether you're doing that or not. So this alignment stick, you can get them at any home improvement store for a couple bucks. Don't buy them from the golf store or from online because they're just gonna overcharge you for them. These are literally just a couple dollar fiberglass sticks that you can buy at any home improvement store, at least here in the United States. If you're not in the United States, I'm, not sure what you may have available to you, but in the US, any home, imp home improvement store, a couple bucks, all right? So I'm gonna take half of it and put it at the end here and half of it down the shaft. And I like to grip it on the bottom. It's a little bit more comfortable for me to, to grip it on the bottom. You may, may find it to be more comfortable for you as well. But again, I'm gonna set up to this on my lead side. I'm gonna bring this back right here. And again, I wanna have this stick pointing to the right of the target, but I wanna have this sensation that I'm moving and not allowing the stick to get closer to me as I'm coming through, All right? I wanna come through just like that. So let's try to do one in a practice swing here. So again, I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna bring it back, arm bent, wrist bent, pointing out to the right, arm on my shoulder. I'm gonna rock this back and really try to work down. I wanna hit the turf a little bit more there. <clears throat> if we look down replay, you're probably gonna see that I didn't flex in my knees very much. I didn't move my hips back. I didn't move down to the ball. Right, that's why I didn't really brush the turf very much. All right, so again, I'm gonna get right there. I'm gonna make sure on this one, then I move down to the ball. Yeah, so on that one, I got much, much better with that. So now it's, now that I'm able to do that, now I'm gonna try to add the golf ball and try to deal with the golf ball. So again, and remember, we're not trying to crush these golf balls. We're just trying to get this movement down. So that one went out a little bit to the right. And you're gonna hit some like that. <clears throat> you're gonna struggle with this in the beginning, and you're gonna hit something to the right. Don't worry about that. It's about how you're moving. That's the most important thing, is how you're moving to get this done. Now, I would highly recommend that you work on this 30 minutes a day. You can work on this in your home. Put a little piece of scrap carpet down, wad up some, um, some pieces of paper, and just hit the pieces of paper. Use a foam ball, hit into a curtain, hit into a towel, hit into something. You can get a lot of reps in at home, and just getting this working better is gonna make huge dividends for your golf swing. So 
work on this. I would recommend 30 minutes a day, every day if you can. I'm telling you, you keep working on that, it's gonna make a huge difference. A lot of people overestimate what they can do in one range session, but they always underestimate what they can do over a long period of time. This isn't gonna make a huge difference just doing it for 30 minutes. But if you do this for 30 minutes for a month, every day, or even every other day, it's gonna make a big difference for you. So that's what I highly recommend that you do. Now, the reality is here, if none of this really matters, if we're starting to stand up in the start of the downswing, if we're already in the start of the downswing, moving our hips forward and getting this club steep, it's gonna be really, really difficult to be anywhere near this position. So before you take a ton of time and work on this drill, you know, 30 minutes a day for the next month, I mean, that's my challenge to you here. But before you do that, I want you to check out this bonus video I have for you, where Clay is gonna talk about the position of the club and the arms and everything we need to have in the start of the downswing to be able to get into this position. Because honestly, if this club is steep, if we're standing up at the very start, there's just no chance you're gonna be able to do any of this, right? So make sure that you're doing that. You may need to work on this bonus drill video to be able to get into this position. So if you wanna see that video, uh, I'm gonna play a preview of it here in just a moment, but if you wanna see the whole video, just click the I card that's gonna appear up on your screen. If you don't see the I card, no worries, just click the link in the description below. Play well, and I'll talk to you soon. Now the bottom line is that if you pull this club down to ring that bell or pull the hands more from the inside, what's gonna happen is you start to rush your downswing from that pulling, and that can throw off your sequence. And we all know that once your sequence gets off, that is gonna be the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being out driven way too often, or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in this steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now, your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now, I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't wanna be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's gonna allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I wanna be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do.